forgot to introduce myself earlier. My name's James. I'm one of the ministers here at Tom's. And I want to ask you all this morning, what is Christmas all about? That's the question. And we just read a passage, John 1, 1 to 18, which tells us everything that Christmas is all about. So I thought we'd have a little bit of fun. Uh, we're going to make this a bit like a game show. I have some chocolates to give away. And I want you to guess the three things that Christmas... They all start with the letter, letter L. And then I. L I. So hands up if you think you know. I'm going to give you a visual clue for one of them. Maybe you can see it. Who thinks they know what Christmas is all about? Yes, let's see. Over here, Emma, I think you had your hand up first. Emma, what's Christmas all about? Life is all about one. I'm going to say two more guesses for the two more points. Count right, you just can't guess. And Christmas, Christmas. Next one's tricky because we're actually in John 1 to 18, but you know. It's Christmas, use your imagination. What's our last guest? Kate. Love. Oh, isn't that a good answer? But it's wrong. It's not in there. But you know, God loves us a lot, so here, have a chocolate anyway. Oh, we guessed, and little. life, right? Stuff. And look, Jesus is the main job. Not bad. So it's a round of applause. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's our big idea for Christmas is all about lights, life, and little ones, because Jesus shows us God, and he gives us eternal life, and he gives us the right to become God's children. We're going to look at those three points, starting with point number one, Christmas is all about lights, and Jesus is the light of the world. If you have a Bible there, please look down to verse nine, I'm going to read it out for us. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Uh, now, I love Christmas lights. We don't really have many up at the moment, but hands up if you do have Christmas lights up at home. It's a very impressive house. Oh, good effort. Not bad. Uh, here's some of the most impressive ones I found so far this year. This is from St. Clair. That's pretty good, right? Like, well done, Penrith. That's a great effort. And I think Christmas lights are fantastic because they're pretty. That's a good thing. But they also, like, light up the whole street. They help you to see what's there, even though it's dark. And you can see every detail of the house, every beam and pillar and railing. It just casts out darkness, just as if it was day. But as impressive as those lights are, at Christmas we're told that Jesus is the light of the world. He is the true light that gives light to everyone. And he reveals something far more important than just a house. At Christmas, we remember that Jesus has come into the world to show us exactly what God is like. Jesus reveals what God is like. That was our very last verse in verse 18. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Now, lots of people for lots of years have tried to guess what God is like, and lots of cultures have lots of ideas, but we don't need to guess. We only have to look at Jesus, who is himself God, and in the closest relationship with the Father, because Jesus has made the Father known. Uh, think back to the Christmas lights for a second. Remember, they help us to see what's really there, even though it's dark. Well, in the same way, Jesus has come into our world 
which is blinded by darkness, so that we can see and know exactly what God is like. And what do we see that God is like? Well, in our passage, we see that he's described as full of grace and full of truth. And so the first thing we need to know about Christmas is that God wants you to know him. In fact, he wants you to know him so much that he sent Jesus into our messy world so you can see for yourself that he's full of grace and full of truth. And so we don't need to be fumbling around in the dark anymore, guessing at what God is like and what he thinks of us. All we need to do is keep looking at Jesus. And if you know and follow him, well then, you know God the Father. So Christmas is an invitation to come and see for yourself. Investigate who Jesus is, because he is the true light that gives light to everyone who wants to know the Father. And the flip side is that if you don't know Jesus yet, well, then you're still in the dark about who God is and what he is like. That's our first point. Christmas is about lights. And Jesus is the light of the world. But it's also about enjoying life. And it's the hope of eternal life. That's our second point. Christmas is all about enjoying life in Jesus. We see in verse 4, in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Now, Christmas time, it's one of those events where we make the most of the good things on offer in life, right? We take holidays, we eat good food, we drink good drink, we enjoy time with family and friends, but there's a problem. The problem is that it doesn't last. Holidays are eventually over. We need to return to work and school and people eventually have to leave home. The leftovers finally run out and someone has to deal with all the mess after Christmas lunch. The good things in this life, they simply don't last. And then there are those of us where Christmas is not just a happy time, it's also a really hard time. Because as we look around the table, our hearts ache for those who aren't with us anymore our loved ones who we continue to grieve at every birthday, Christmas, and celebration. Our celebrations are still tinged with a sense of sadness. But there is hope, because Jesus has come to bring life to everyone who follows him. It's life that doesn't end. It's life that is to be enjoyed forever. He comes to bring spiritual, real, and eternal life. In a few chapters later, in John 3.16, perhaps one of the most well-known verses in the Bible, it says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God wants us to find life in Jesus. Because as good as this life can be, eternal life will be so much better. Uh, to help us think about this, think about your Christmas meal coming up in a couple of hours' time. You might have nibblies and snacks, you know, Cabanossi and Jackson cheese, all the classics, while guests are arriving, and they're good. Like, Cabanossi's fine, it's fantastic. But they're not the thing that you're looking forward to. You're looking forward to the main meal. The main meal is the meal that actually satisfies. And we can think about life this same way. This life can be really good. And I hope today is full of celebrating and enjoying just how good this world is that God has made. But it's just a taste of what eternal life will be, the life that will fully satisfy, the life that will not end, a life that's no longer tinged with sadness because there is no more mourning, there's no more crying, and there's no more pain. That is what Jesus has come to offer his people at Christmas eternal life and he would bring that as he was born as a baby and he grew up to live a perfect life and as he went to the cross to die in our place and as he was raised back to life again now living that eternal life to show the world that it is true and that it is certain and coming and this changes a lot about how we think about Christmas today maybe you aren't looking forward to the rest of today Perhaps it's going to be full of difficult relationships, arguments, and traffic. Or perhaps right now you're super stressed and can't stop thinking about everything you need to do when you get home. Well, Jesus has come into the world 
to point us to something much greater than just the here and now. Jesus has come so that you can be rescued and experience life as it should be. Something worth truly celebrating. And so, here's the good news. It doesn't matter if things aren't perfect today. It doesn't matter if they're not 100% enjoyable. It doesn't matter if you have to miss out because you have to work or people are in quarantine or because of COVID. It doesn't matter that our celebrations come to an end tomorrow or next week. Because if we have life in Jesus, we look forward to eternal life. And today we can just enjoy what is a small taste of something much greater that is to come. And know that we can only experience that if we believe and follow Jesus. And if you aren't doing that yet, I've got to ask, is Christmas enough for you? Is Jats and Cabanossi and cheese enough? Is this life with all of its brokenness and uncertainty enough? I don't think so. Jesus has come so that you can have so much more. So believe in him. Look forward to the eternal life he offers. So far, we've seen that Christmas is all about lights and Jesus is the light of the world. He reveals God to us. We've also seen that he's come to give us eternal life, but we can only do that if we become children of God. This is our last point. Christmas is all about little ones. It's all about Jesus who came as a little one so that we can become children of God. Uh, We heard of this in verse 12, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. Uh, Now for the little ones amongst us, I need to give you a yearly reminder about this. Often you get really excited about Christmas, because Christmas is really exciting, and we love that you are super excited and get up at 5 a.m. just to start the day. And so often means that grown-ups put a lot of time and energy and attention into making it exciting for you. That is a good thing. But guess what? Christmas is not about you. Oh, the yearly reminder. We need to hear it every year. And that's okay, because it is still about a little one, but someone much more important. Ultimately, Christmas is all about Jesus. Fully God who came as a little one, being born as a baby, so that we can become children of God. That's what the passage says. To all who received Jesus and believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God and born of God. At Christmas, remember that Jesus has come so that we can be part of God's family. And this makes me think of a famous Christmas story. Uh, The Christmas Carol, A Christmas Carol, written a long time ago. It's had lots of different movies, adaptions. Uh, You can see a slide of it up there. Um, If you've never seen it or never read A Christmas Carol, it's about Ebenezer Scrooge, who's this greedy and lonely old man, and he just hates Christmas. Think the Grinch, but rich. And after several encounters, he's transformed. He changes. He almost becomes a different person, in fact. And the most impactful scene of that story is where he spends Christmas dinner, not alone in his empty mansion like every other year, but instead in the warm home of Tiny Tim, who invited him in, who had restored relationships with his family. He got to celebrate life like an adopted member of their family. And so likewise, we are to be transformed. We're to be part of God's family, given a new identity and able to share in all the riches that God has. And so even if you can't celebrate with loved ones this Christmas, know that you don't have to be alone. You have a loving Father in heaven waiting for you. And as you think about who you are this Christmas, And whether that's a success or failure as a parent, a spouse, a child, or a friend, we need to remember first, of all things, that we are a beloved and cherished child of God. That Jesus has come so that you can be part of his family. And if you are someone who's exhausted at the moment by trying to make Christmas special for the little ones or loved ones in your life, just pause and think about how much your Heavenly Father cares for you 
how he labors for you, the fact that he never gets tired, that he never forgets about you, that he never loses his temper. And if you keep following Jesus, then there will always be a place waiting for you in his house. And if you're not a follower of Jesus yet, well, what are you waiting for? Jesus has come so that we can know God and see that he's full of grace, he's full of truth. Jesus has come so that we can have eternal life and know that the best this world can offer is just a taste of the eternal life that is to come. And Jesus has come so that your life can be transformed and you can find a place in God's family with a heavenly Father who loves you perfectly. And all we need to do, well, is to receive Jesus as Lord and believe in his name. If you want to know what that looks like, come chat to me or anyone here afterwards. We would love to tell you more. And I think a great next step would be for you to come and join us tomorrow as we discover more about what it looks like to follow Jesus. Friends, family, what is Christmas all about? Well, we've seen it's all about Jesus. Jesus is the true light. Jesus is the one that offers eternal life. And Jesus came as a little one so that we can become God's children. Let's pray thanking God and asking for his help. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your gracious gift at Christmas of your precious son. Thank you that he's come to bring light so that we may see you and know you. Thank you that he's come so that he can bring life so that we may live with you forever. Thank you that he has come and brought with him the right to become children of God so we can be in your family. Help us to believe in him, to follow him as our Lord. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm going to ask the band to come up the front. We're going to sing of those great truths.